On 9-11, Saturn and Pluto were not alone in their powerful astrological configuration. The Sun also played its magical part in the skies above the tragic scene below. Saturn and Pluto, opposed in the signs of Gemini and Sagittarius, were joined by the Sun in the sign of Virgo, at 90 degrees, forming an aspect known as a grand T-square. The Sun, astrologically, is said to intensify the existing aspect that it becomes part of, namely the 180 degree opposition between Saturn and Pluto, and seemingly, magically, the Sun's astrological energy intensified this already powerful aspect, creating the total destruction of the massively towering twin structures on an unprecedented scale. The astrological sun also governs the aspect of the individual, an individual's personal power, the individual's sense of purpose, and the individual's expression of will. And, as the sun was in the sign of Virgo on 9-11, which is said to rule service to others, the individual's personal power became one of unification. The sense of purpose was to save others' lives and the expression of will was one of self-sacrifice with record numbers of the police, ambulance and fire services out in full force risking life and limb as well as general members of the public going to great lengths to save the lives of others whilst risking their own. Is this yet another example of as above so below energy playing itself out upon the world stage? Is there something else about these three planets that would suggest to us that some other force had its part to play that day? Thirty-three degree Mason Albert Pike, the only military man in history to have a dedicated statue in Washington DC, is renowned for his Freemasonic epic Morals and Dogma, which has 32 chapters, the last of which is mysteriously entitled Sublime Prince of the Royal Secret. In Morals and Dogma, Pike informs the reader that the two solstices, Cancer and Capricorn, the two gates of heaven, are the two pillars. They still appear in our lodges as the two great pillars, Jackin and Boaz. The solstices are of course the extreme outer stations of the sun when viewing the horizon over the course of the solar year. These two stations of the sun form the northern solstice in Cancer and the southern solstice in Capricorn and as Pike himself stated they are represented as the two mysterious Freemasonic pillars Boaz and Jackin. And as we have seen in previous episodes, these pillars may have been magically represented by the Twin Towers of 9-11. On the surface, Pike's quote presents us with a setback. The two solstices, and therefore the two pillars, are housed within, according to Pike, the two astrological signs, Cancer and Capricorn, and not Gemini and Sagittarius the signs which so accurately symbolize the qualities of 9-11. However, further on in Morals and Dogma, which coincidentally was republished in 1966, the same year that groundbreaking work began at the World Trade Center site, Pike refers to the Roman scholar Macrobius, renowned for his work entitled Saturnalia. Pike tells us that the galaxy, according to Macrobius, crosses the two opposite points Cancer and Capricorn. The two tropics before his time corresponded with those two constellations, but in his time with Gemini and Sagittarius, placing us right back in 9-11. This is because, as Pike informs us of the precession of the equinoxes, a celestial phenomenon which means that because of the Earth's axial wobble, the constellation seen rising in the east during the spring equinox, or the point between the solstices 
as seen here, moves backwards through the zodiac, so the solstice within Cancer, the northern solstice, would eventually take place with Gemini as its backdrop. Furthermore, in Morals and Dogma, Pike gives us more Freemasonic symbolism that represents the solstices, also known as Boaz and Jackin. He tells the reader that they are also known as two parallel lines which bound the circle with a point in the center, which is an emblem of the sun. The sun, we are told, is also known within Freemasonic circles as the Blazing Star. The Blazing Star, Pike continues, or the glory in the center, is an emblem of prudence, an emblem of omniscience, the all-seeing eye, all of which are references to the sun. The blazing star or sun is seen here between the two solstices or Boaz and Jackin on this Freemasonic tracing board. The blazing star or glory in the center of Boaz and Jackin is emblematic of the sun and the solstices. The blazing star according to Pike is an emblem of prudence which astrologically is a quality of Virgo and the sun was in the very same sign Virgo directly within the center of Pike's reconsidered solstices Gemini and Sagittarius on 9-11-2001. Is all this just coincidence? Synchronicity? Magical synergy? Or the evidence of some secret symbolic ritualization of the skies on 9-11? A further look at our three celestial wonders reveals more magical correlations, this time with our multi-symbolic magical map of consciousness, the Kabbalah. As we have previously noted, the spheres, or sephira, are each ruled by a planet, and the Sun, Saturn, and Pluto are once again mysteriously directly connected upon the Tree of Life, as seen here with all three planets being directly linked by the magical pathways that connect the spheres. These pathways are each ruled by a tarot card, and the plot definitely thickens when we discover that the path that links Saturn and Pluto is the Magician, our old friend from episode 1, with his by now very familiar as above so below arm positioning, the path linking Saturn and the Sun is the lover's card or the tarot's representation of Gemini, the twins, the sign in which our planet of structure was placed, and the path linking the sun with Pluto is none other than the high priestess, guardian of the mysteries, who also sits between our old friends Boaz and Jackin. Can such direct correlations between a global catastrophic event and the world of the occult really being nothing more than mere proof of the accuracy of its teachings? Should we all believe in magic? <laughs>